The satellites nearest to Earth are those in low Earth orbit. This encompasses a range from about 160 kilometers above the Earth's surface and extends up to about 2,000 kilometers away. Low Earth orbit has a number of uses, for example, communication satellites that require low latency, such as those used for satellite phones, can be found here. However, satellites in this orbit only stay in sight of an area of Earth for a short time, meaning large constellations of satellites must be used for continuous coverage. This is also the height at which all human spaceflights, except for the Apollo missions, take place. The International Space Station can be found here at an altitude of approximately 400 kilometers. Some astronomy missions also take place in low Earth orbit. The Hubble Space Telescope can be found orbiting 559 kilometers above the Earth. This provides a view which is unaffected by the Earth's atmosphere, while leaving the telescope accessible to astronauts for servicing. Hubble has been serviced five times while in orbit with repairs and upgrades carried out. One other major use for this orbit is Earth observation. This includes a number of activities, from military and spy satellites, to weather satellites and environmental monitoring satellites. Low Earth orbit is good for all of these activities as the relative closeness to the surface means that photographs with good resolution can be taken. Satellites in this orbit can also be used to look repeatedly at a number of different places as they complete many orbits per day. Satellites do not all necessarily orbit in the same plane. Some satellites have a polar low Earth orbit which provides a large coverage as the Earth moves around below it. By angling the satellite correctly, it is possible to pass over the same area at the same local time each day, providing continuity in lighting from the Sun, helping to make differences in images more obvious. A problem that low orbits have is atmospheric drag, which is particularly pronounced below 300 kilometers. This has the effect of slowing the satellite, lowering its orbit, making it re-enter and crash if left uncorrected. At lower levels, this can be beneficial, helping to clear away space debris. However, debris still remains a problem, particularly in low Earth orbit, due to the sheer number of things that are up there. Moving up higher, we have medium Earth orbits. An important example of these is the semi-synchronous orbit. 20,200 kilometers above the Earth, satellites here take 12 hours to complete one full orbit, meaning they complete two each day. This means the ground track of the satellite follows a consistent and easily predictable path. This is part of the reason that GPS satellites are positioned here. For GPS to work, the user must be able to see four satellites to get good position data. If a lower orbit were used, many more satellites would be needed to achieve global coverage. If a higher one were used, either the satellites would need more powerful transmitters, or users would need better, more expensive receivers. Additionally, if a higher orbit such as geosynchronous were used, then coverage in regions towards the North and South Poles would be much reduced, as the line of sight to satellites would be limited. Other navigation systems, such as GLONASS and Galileo, occupy similar orbits. Unlike satellites in low Earth orbit, those in medium Earth orbit move beyond the inner Van Allen belt and are therefore exposed to more radiation. Therefore, measures must be taken in their construction to protect sensitive parts, such as circuits and sensors. Another interesting orbit in the medium range is the Russian Molnya orbit. Unlike the orbits discussed so far, Molnya is not circular, but is instead highly elliptical. With an eccentricity of 0.72, Molnya has a perigee of 7,378 kilometers and an apogee of 45,730 kilometers. The elliptical shape is very important, as conservation of angular momentum, discussed in Kepler's second law, means that the satellite's speed is much reduced in the higher parts of its orbit. With the orbit inclined at 63.4 degrees, this causes satellites to effectively loiter over regions with high latitudes, providing them 
with the communication signals that geosynchronous orbit cannot. Each orbit here takes 12 hours, with the satellite high enough to provide coverage for 8 hours of this. Hence, three satellites are needed for continuous coverage. In this orbit, a satellite passes through the Van Allen belt four times a day, so radiation protection is required. Compared to geosynchronous Earth orbit, achieving a Molniya orbit requires less energy, but, as it moves about relative to its ground station, steerable antennas must be used. Even further out, we have geosynchronous Earth orbits. Satellites here are positioned 42,164 kilometers above the Earth, in an orbit designed to have a period matching the time it takes for the Earth to perform one full rotation. Geostationary orbits are a special case which are positioned on the equator and from the ground will appear to remain in the exact same place in the sky. If the orbit is inclined or elliptical, then the ground track will resemble a figure of eight that repeats daily. Due to their constant presence over a part of the Earth, satellites here are often used for communications. Theoretically, a single satellite in this orbit has line of sight to one third of the Earth's surface. However, practically, a satellite can only reliably be used for coverage over a smaller area. Two-way communication via this orbit suffers from high latency, with signals taking an eighth of a second to travel from Earth to the orbit, meaning a minimum of a half second delay between speaking to someone and hearing their reply. Of course, there is one more important satellite around the Earth, its natural one, the Moon. The Moon orbits the Earth in a slightly eccentric orbit, which also has an inclination of 5.145 degrees. The semi-major axis of the orbit is 384,399 kilometers, and it performs one orbit every 27 days, 7 hours and 43 minutes. The Moon has a number of scientific uses, Astronomy from the lunar surface would benefit from the lack of an atmosphere as well as cool temperatures when in shadow and the blocking of radio signals from Earth that occurs on the far side. Longer term goals could see the Moon used as a staging post for missions out into the solar system and perhaps even one day the establishment of a permanent human settlement. Bye for now.